Shut up and sit down. Howdy and salutations, welcome to Broken Table Commentary, a three-man creative debate podcast all about the greatest of fake sports, professional wrestling. Every week, we each bring a different topic to the table. The topics can be ridiculous or serious, opinion or factual, creative or not, whatever we feel like. On commentary, we have our Mark, the debonair diabetic dad, Lenton. That's me, everybody. Hi. Our historian, the Scottish grumple stiltskin, Michael. Bust me bagpipes. <laughs> and our critic, me, Jessel. As always, you can follow us at BrokenTableCommentary.com or search for us on Facebook, SoundCloud, and YouTube as Broken Table Commentary. And you can listen to our broadcast every Thursday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This is episode number zero, Table of Contents. What does that mean? What's an episode zero? Uh, an episode zero specifically means that Michael isn't here, which you could probably tell because I used a Scrooge McDuck clip for Michael. So we're establishing for now into the future that Scrooge McDuck is Michael until Michael is here. That's right. Leap in Loch Ness! Though Michael should be here next week, because next week, episode one, we're going to open with a bang. But before we talk about that, first off, I just want to say, hey... Thanks for joining us if you are, and if you're not, then I, you're not hearing this, so I don't need to talk to you. The whole point of this show is that uh, Michael, Lenton, and I all have very similar feelings about wrestling and very different opinions, which makes us really entertaining to talk about with wrestling. <laughs> That is a very good way of putting it. I hadn't heard that yet. That's really good. Thanks. I've been. I, I literally have a whole page of things to write down, little sound clips that I wanted to say specifically, and that was one of them. That's a t-shirt right there. I, I want a t-shirt with just that whole intro, just printed on it. Just a paragraph. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't want that T-shirt. <laughs> no, Normal, don't get me uh, that. Normally, every uh, broadcast or episode, uh, we will uh, have three topics. One introduced by me, one introduced by Michael, and one introduced by Linton. But without Michael today, uh, instead, we're going to take his time and use that to talk about what's coming up for our first episode, because that is the thing that set up this whole show, got this whole thing roiling in my mind brain. The Booker T Fantasy Invitational. Yeah, baby! Or yeah, shucky ducky quack quack. Shucky ducky quack quack indeed. Uh, if you don't know what that is, we have an FAQ about it on our website, brokentablecommentary.com. But essentially, it is a simple game that is March Madness for the WWE. The three of us will be fantasy booking the WWE from WrestleMania 2017 to WrestleMania 2018. Every title match, every number one contender as necessary, the Rumble, any Survivor Series of notes, anything that matters that happens on a pay-per-view or happens along a title, including hirings, uh, drafts, call-ups from NXT, we have to book all of it. And then for every correct prediction, you get points. Do you want me to ask questions now? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I figure that that makes a lot of sense instead of just me talking at you. No, yeah, but you ended that on a sentence as if you were still talking, so. I'm sorry. Uh, no, go ahead, sir. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll edit that. That was weird. I'm not um, going to do it. <laughs> uh, my first question is a question that if we're booking, we're booking from WrestleMania to WrestleMania. So we're booking how re the end of WrestleMania 2017 goes, and then we're just booking what the actual matches are of 2018, right? Not the ending of those matches in 2018? Uh, I would say that you book every match and every winner of every match, starting with your predictions for what you think or want to happen at WrestleMania 2017. Go all the way to WrestleMania 2018 and pick your winners for that, too. But don't we, won't we, when we start it next year, we'll want to start our next year on the winners of WrestleMania? Yeah, but WrestleMania is all about, uh, it's the essentially the season finale 
of WWE. So having the culminations of your storylines or whatever, it just makes sense. We're already talking about our matches. We might as well say who we think's going to win because that'll be that'll be fun. Plus, um, you get points. The point system is you get points for every correct title change, every correct championship match participants. No matter who has the title, if the same two people have a match, you get a point for that, and for predicting it at the right pay-per-view. So uh, having your correct predictions for WrestleMania winners would get you points. Yeah, I'm just saying that Doing it that way means that our first time playing is going to be different than all of our other times playing. Why is that? Because our first time playing, we're booking the end of WrestleMania a year later to the end of WrestleMania. And then the next season, we'll be booking the day after WrestleMania. Oh, no. We'll, next year, we'll do WrestleMania to WrestleMania again. Because there is no way all three of us are 100% correct on our 2018 WrestleMania. So... After a year goes by, we're going to have to start from the new so, WrestleMania card again. Oh, so we'll get a second chance at those points, basically. Okay, yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, it always goes WrestleMania to WrestleMania. Because it'll be really funny to say, oh, I think that Rusev will be the WWE title holder uh, and defend it against Zack Ryder at <laughs> WrestleMania 2018. And then when we get there and it's Roman Reigns versus Roman Reigns, for the WWE <laughs> title in a ladder match, that you're going to laugh because it's like, man, that was silly. But you don't want to be stuck with that prediction and move forward from there. So we we reboot uh, the week or two before next year's WrestleMania for the next Booker T Fantasy Invitational. By the way, it is an Invitational. An Invitational means that anyone who's listening, if you want to play along, Go to our website. We have a PDF form that I'm updating regularly as we get more uh, as we get more correct card for WrestleMania, and you can absolutely play the Booker T Fantasy Invitational with us. If you're updating it regularly, when would you uh, advise people is the best time to get to go over there and get the finalized, updated, done version of this? Uh, well, next. Next week, uh, on the 23rd, we record on the Wednesday before, so the 23rd for everyone listening, we are going to have our answers in. Michael Lenton and I are going to have our answers in, locked. But you guys don't, anyone else playing along, you don't actually have to have yours locked in until the Saturday before WrestleMania. So that would be April 1st. So I'm going to update until we have the exact card continually okay. for everyone else. But Michael Linton and I are going to – we're going to be locked in next week. So right. uh, everyone at home playing along will have a little bit of advantage over us, which is fun. Oh, no, that's perfectly fine. So that's two and a half weeks, listeners. Two and a half weeks to get into the website, brokentable.com, brokentablecommentary.com. Yeah, not You'll broken see- table. You will see at the top, Booker T Fantasy Invitational 2017. You will see at the side, Broken Table Commentary Presents, Booker T Fantasy Invitational 2017. You cannot miss the link to it. It is everywhere on this website. Well, sir, it's our biggest thing. It's how we're going to open our show. Well, technically we're opening the show with this, but without Michael here, it's not really the show. Kick me, kilts! And uh, I will let you know, everybody listening, that if you... Fill out your PDF and you email it to brokentablecommentary at gmail.com. We will get it up on the website for everybody to see. I will need you to do that a little bit sooner than the 1st of April if you want it up for WrestleMania. I would say about a week before that. So if you can get it in there around the, between the 25th, 28th, 29th, I'll, I'll get it up there if you do it the day before WrestleMania. It just might show up a little bit after WrestleMania. But if you send your PDF to our official email, brokentablecommentary at gmail.com, I will get that up on the website for everybody to see. So everybody will know if you are a genius or you a sucker. That's right. Because we are all competing to find out who's going to be the King Booker for the year, which will be a wonderful thing. I can't wait to be it. <laughs> I, I'm I'm interested to see who of the three of us will do the best, or who will do the least worst, or who will do the least worst. Uh, uh, um, I mentioned it before, but just to make sure we're all on the same page, 
uh, you get points in one of three ways. You get points by correctly predicting that a wrestler will become champion because you had them win a championship match. You get a point if you correctly predict any two people in a championship match at a pay-per-view. And you'll get a point if you put the correct match at the correct pay-per-view. And uh, you'll... you. There are other things on the uh, form that you can fill out that you get points to as well. The uh, the the draft, trades, the call ups, all those are worth points, correct? Not currently. Oh, I they was... are they are arbitrary limitations, so that we all have that way. We all can't just fantasy book that the entire TNA roster gets called up. That's a waste of time. So it's just uh, there are a limited number of drafts, call ups, and hirings to make all of our predictions more interesting but none of them worth points because they're too hard to track i don't want to have to worry about that it's just about the matches and the title changes it's all about the championships that's right so do a little bit of history before you jump into this that is correct which our historian is probably going to kill us well that's true uh he he will do he will do pretty darn well i think Uh, if you have any other questions there is an faq on the website so go check it out. It should answer everything. If it doesn't answer everything, hit us up on the email. Hit us up on Facebook. Or you can call me. Yeah, what's it, your number? Nah, I'm not going to do that. That'd be really funny. Yeah, it would be really funny, but I'm not a really funny guy. That's true. <laughs> now, normally we would go into, uh, after all that cleanup, we'd have three topics. But we don't have Michael here, so we're only going to do two topics today. Uh, we each... Pre- we each create a topic for the others to answer and then we answer them uh i think that makes sense yes that sounds like a fine way to do things without our our big boy here (laughs) good fantastic one so to make life easy my topic is just let's run down mania uh we're not going to predict anything we're not going to book anything but i just want to know your your hype or what you're interested in uh for every match uh, WrestleMania season's upon us. I think every match is now finally... I think every match is determined. Maybe maybe not quite all of them, but I think I, all of them are determined. I would say... Well, I'll talk more when we start running it down. I would say that not everything is determined yet. I have them in a list here. Let's just go from, uh, go from non-title matches to title matches and end at the Universal... So first up is John Cena and Nikki Bella versus The Miz and Maurice. What are your uh, thoughts? How are you feeling? What's your hype level? Because I'm actually pretty interested in it. It's the second time John Cena and The Miz have met at WrestleMania. Their first match was bad, but that was The Rock's fault and John Cena's concussion. I think he had a concussion. It looked like he had a concussion. <laughs> Spreading rumors. Uh, I'm definitely interested in it. I'm a little bit worried about Maurice here. She hasn't wrestled in a while. Uh, she's definitely been the low point of the feud. I don't know if you saw SmackDown last night or saw oh, I her. Like, I like Maurice. I don't think she's the low point. Did you, I, I'm asking if you saw her cutting her promo last night. Did you or did you not? Yeah, I watched it. I saw it. Uh, well, she had an extremely difficult time just putting words together. And... English isn't her first language. What do you want? <laughs> I want more preparation before you go on. You go out there and you cut a promo. What you want everyone to be scripted? Sound like a piece of wood with a tape recorder I, attached to it, like T.J. Perkins? Did I say reading a script? I just said preparation. Preparation H. Oh wow, that's that's mature of you. That's, we disagree, so you talk about buttholes. That's right. <laughs> No, I, I think Maurice is fine. I, 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 I like the match. Plus, I'm pretty sure this is a total Bella's stunt so that John proposes, right? The, uh, the only I, championship that's worth more than the WWE title is Nikki Bella's eternal love, which he already has. I thought that for a while. You brought that up a couple of weeks ago, maybe probably like a month ago. But Maurice is talking about the fact that, oh, I have something that but Nikki has never had and will never have, and that's a wedding ring it just seems like there'd be no surprise factor to it whatsoever just yeah of so course stage. there's not gonna be any surprise to it because I, I, I don't we think are so. smarter than the average no for poor little nikki she's got to have a nicer proposal than that no it's not happening she's getting proposed to at mania nah I, right. i'm not calling it <laughs> well, we'll see um uh under the giant battle memorial we got now with five people in it 
I thought we only had three. Who are the five? I got three uh, on my side. Mojo, Kurt Hawkins, Andre, uh, Andre, uh, Braun Strowman. Um, uh, aren't there a couple more that guy didn't got put in? I've got Big Show, Apollo, and Mojo. Those are the only three I am aware of. Big Show and Apollo. Yeah, so there you go. I got five. Okay, I didn't know Braun had been officially put in there. When did that happen? Uh, I thought that happened on on uh, YouTube. Oh well, because I because when I was doing some research just a couple hours ago, I was looking it up and I I only saw one article, but it only listed those three. Well, but maybe, you maybe maybe I'm just postulating. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm putting forward what I think is going to happen. Because potentially he seems a lock, right? He doesn't have a match. Yeah, I would assume that he would go in there. Yeah. But uh, what what do you think about the memorial? I hate it personally. It's just paycheck the match. Well, they've been doing this match already at WrestleMania. They just haven't been calling it the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. So it doesn't bother me. They're just added a big statue to give to the winner. I just wish it mattered. <laughs> it. Ma- I mean it. It that. As someone who watches a lot of real sports and people play tournaments for half a year just to get this one little trophy or something that they just that doesn't actually mean anything, it just means that they did good at the sport. Having one little tournament where you or one little match where you win just this one little trophy, it, it feels like a real sport thing. So I actually it actually doesn't bother me. I actually kind of like it. I, just, I, I like the trophy. Okay, you won a trophy. It's not something you have to run around and defend. You won this trophy because once a year you were the best. Yeah, but I, the thing, I like it. The thing that makes wrestle, professional wrestling good is that those moments then lead to story, and that's where I have a problem because but, it never matters. The winner no. never matters. Baron Corbin won, and it took him nine months to capitalize on it. Cesaro won and didn't get to capitalize on it. Big Show won and it didn't matter in the slightest. No, and I don't disagree that if you were going to not do the Battle Royal at all, there'd be a better thing to do with them, but they've been doing stuff like that for a long time. I'm saying I like that they're that it has become the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal instead of like Sheamus and Daniel Bryan start a match and then it turns into a random battle royal that the great Kali wins at the WrestleMania I'm at and ruins my whole entire night. Uh, that was that was bad. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. But no, I agree. I would much rather see those guys spread out in actual feuds and stuff than but if th- just, they're gonna do it, I then just I, wish I like the winner was it was used for story. But whatever. It's, I'm, I'm wishing. Well, if the wishes year, were fishes, I would eat some fish. The year Cesaro won it, they uh, had a. Uh, it was Swagger, right? They broke the trophy and started the feud between him and Cesaro. I mean, it wasn't a good feud, but they actually. They still used the fact that Cesaro won it, and it actually. Yep, they built sure something did. They used, the, they used the fact that Cesaro won it to bring Cesaro down the card to a worse place than he was originally where he should have been feuding with Brock Lesnar because they were both Paul Heyman guys. My point is that it was a storyline based it was a on a bad storyline. No, it, that was not a good one. But <laughs> they uh, how many how many have there been? Is this this I is going to be the I fourth think this one? Is the fourth one. This yeah, is the fourth so one, Cesaro, think. Big Show and uh Baron Corbin, there's your winners. Yeah. Uh, uh, but hey, uh, to be fair, Baron Corbin, who won last year, right? He, he actually, they actually did finally start to use him. So maybe this year, they're learning. There's a learning curve. It took a couple rumbles for the rumbles to matter. So you know. Next up is uh, next up will uh, Seth Rollins Triple H. I mean, now is- the promos are fine, but I really don't care. Uh, I don't know if I care or not. I like the fact that this match has been building for so long. That is so rare these days in the WWE. This has been building since the, uh, the, the brand split. Now, I mean, now, the, ho- now, hold on. That's not rare for the WWE any longer. They did the, they booked the once in a lifetime match and the rematch. And that was a year long storyline. Like it's oh, not, okay. they, they've been building long story the the marquee long storyline to WrestleMania for years now. This was just another one. They, this one's been building since Seth used the pedigree instead of the curb stomp. And and I actually and I like that. And that part of the match I like. I I it's a match that uh there have been moments during this long build that I've been like, oh, I want to see this match. This current time in my life, this is not one of those moments. 
But maybe in the next couple of weeks they can recapture it. We'll see. But there have definitely been moments during the long, long build that I have wanted to see it. So I, I'm not completely out of hope with it. Triple H, I usually like at WrestleMania. I think he performs very well. I don't know. I just look at the card, and I'm like, man, is Triple H going to let this thing take place where it should in the bottom half? Or is he going to try to pull Triple H versus Sheamus and put it way up high on the card for no reason? I don't remember that one being high up on the card. Oh, goodness. Yeah. It was he won the, that, right? Yeah, of course oh, I'm he sure won he won it. Yeah, I can't remember that match. AJ versus Shane. Oh, God. Man, I, don't, <laughs> I don't like talking bad about wrestling. Uh, I mean, it's going to be a Shane McMahon match, which, I mean, AJ will make Shane look good. But it's, uh, <laughs> The weirdest part about all of it, because I actually really like this. I think it makes a lot of sense. I think they've told the story in a really good way. The <laughs> problem is they're pretending that AJ's a heel. AJ's absolutely the babyface in this whole scenario. Yeah, Shane is I the, agree. Shane is the is the the plucky, well-meaning but heel commissioner of SmackDown who keeps holding AJ down, restarting a match for no reason. It just it it's it's silly that they're treating AJ like a heel because if you replace AJ with Stone Cold and Shane with Vince. This exact story <laughs> would be what they do in 1999. Yeah, it's funny. But because it's AJ and Shane, Shane is always babyface, and AJ is is stuck being a heel for whatever reason. But regardless, I think the match is going to be fun. I think it's going to be fine. I'm more I'm more interested in uh, AJ's fast style and Shane's um, uh, big cells and quick. Uh, quick offense than Triple H's slow plotting WWE style regular matches. Well, I hope you're right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I'm not excited about it, but I'm excited to see AJ Styles. I really like AJ Styles. I'm no. Uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, okay, uh, title matches. First off, we have uh, let's let's talk about the SmackDown tag match because that's the only one that isn't confirmed, right? That's the only t- title match that isn't confirmed for WrestleMania. Yep. Uh, I was, it's got to be Usos American Alpha, right? Yeah, so, I mean Usos got the win. Yeah, do you think they're going to try to put anybody else in there, or is it just going to be those two? I would assume it's just those two, since we've got the Andre the Giant Battle Royal. Yeah, they don't need to cram more people in the match. I'd be surprised if the match gets the main card, but I'd expect it just to be those two. Uh, first off, I, let me let me grind this stone. Now that the, now that we have the WWE Network, there's no such thing as a pre-show. Oh, yeah, that's true. They it's still call the it card. that, but it's that is true. It's just like if you've been there live. Dark matches are matches you watched if you were there live. We get to have the full experience. So I, I don't like discounting things because it's on the pre-show. It's my well, they, axe to grind. They, they still offer the ability to purchase pay-per-views at bars and stuff. Uh, it's true, but the pre-show is even online for everyone to watch. On, on YouTube and stuff, so it's not like they're it's not like it's a dark match. Like this is part of the card, it's a thing that everyone can watch. There's a lot of pre-show prejudice, and I, I I'm I'm not I'm not for it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I got a I got a little soapbox, and I'm standing on it, and I'm railing against the wind. As someone who's gone to wrestling shows, wrestling pay-per-views when they're all kickoff shows. There is a uh, much more of an effort made to get people into their seats for the start of the show and not for the kickoff shows. They do not they do not care if the seats are full for a kickoff show. And I know that and that the WWE network was around when I have been to wrestling pay-per-views. So Wait, wrong. It's just the you, match is there. They work hard. They try to, especially on these bigger ones. Well, nowadays they try. You know, you know what's really what ring really is bungled. American what, Alpha. What American really Alpha bungled. has been bungled. Is that a bad thing? Of yeah. being bungled? Okay, yeah, I'm not sure what bungled means. The SmackDown tag titles don't matter. As bad as the club is, at least there are feuds and characters in the Raw tag team scene. The SmackDown tag team scene is nothing. It's it's sometimes they get to be on an episode of SmackDown where they win a squash match. Well, and usually on SmackDown, 
you have a trade off of you either get to see the tag team champions or you get to see the intercontinental champion actually have a match. They seem they're they haven't really figured out how to manage their time yet. Well, see, I don't mind that. The NXT does that. You you have limited amount of time, so not everything's on every show. But at least the IC title has story to it. The tag titles have nothing. They had, what, the Usos gave one promo? I think American Alpha only gives promos on YouTube. No, oh, yeah, I can't think of the last Alpha promo. I don't know. I, 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 I can't stand it. If American Alpha could be the next Steiners, the next... World Greatest Tag Team, the next really good major tag team. Who knows? Not. Maybe they'll send him over to Raw in the next year or so. We'll see what happens. Well, that's something that we can book. Check out the Booker T Invitational Fantasy Invitational 2017. <laughs> next week. Next Booker week. Booker T Fantasy Invitational, the BTFI. BTFI, there you go. SmackDown tag over. Let's talk about the Raw tag team, the the triple threat. Okay, let's talk about what's, it. What's your thought process here? Do you care at all? Um, it. Oh gosh, I. There would be a little part of me that would be like, okay, I'm glad that Enzo and Cass won the belt if they won the belt. But besides that. I'm not invested in this match, and I'm not invested in the current storyline. Well, storyline. I'm making quotes with my finger. I know nobody can see it. But, no, I don't really care. Sheamus and Cesaro have run their course. I'm done with them. Sheamus continues to be a heel, kind of. And they, very kind of. I can't. It, it's done. They should be in the Under the Giant Battle Memorial. Royal. Mo, royal. <laughs> battle Memorial. That's where they should be, so they can one-up each other. And then we can be done with them, and we can move on to new things. And the club, they've lost so many times that them being champs now is, I, I think, transitional at best. And Enzo and Cass? Why are they booking Enzo like a heel? <laughs> There's so much you don't like. Why is he a dumbass? He's a dumbass every episode. He tried to, he tried to get a wife to cheat on her husband. Well, sometimes that works out, my friend. He sexually assaulted people. Well, no, I can't. I can't justify that. No, you can't. Just, I, I, he, because he's an idiot. Big Cass and Enzo lost at Fastlane. Like that's the story of that match. Enzo didn't have his head in the game, so they lost the match. Like I just, I don't, I don't get what they're doing with these characters. But what are you excited about for this match? For this match? No, you got to pick something. I don't have to pick something to be excited about. I, as your I, I will, co-host, I will, I will am say, asking you. All right, you all right, all right, all right, fine. I, I, I will say this. I did think that the club put on their best match that they've had in the WWE at Fastlane. Fastlane was a pretty poopy pay-per-view, but that tag match was pretty good. All right. And them with Cesaro, who's a good worker, Sheamus, who is a good worker, Enzo and Cass getting everybody in the arena hype. It should be fun. I'd open the show, barring the the uh, the matches that they'll put on YouTube, put on the the pre-show. I'd open WrestleMania with this match. Which... All right, cool. I'll take that. Let's go to mid card titles. Intercontinental. That one's yeah. not confirmed. It's not confirmed. I don't think Dean Barron. But come on, it's going to be Dean Barron, right? Yo, oh, yeah, it's got to happen. I ain't a question still looming as if it's a average normal one on one or if they throw some oh, you street think, fight you elements think into it. it. I mean, we, we don't have any any gimmick anything right now, right? Everything's well, I mean, straight. other than other than triple threats. Yeah, but that doesn't really mean anything anymore. <laughs> no, it's true. Uh, what WWE likes to since they move money in the bank away, they like to have one big spot fest match and this will probably be it yeah unless yeah, I would, it's aj I would think shane it. oh yeah aj that could shane be a street shane. fight we'll see but that i would definitely expect this match to happen and i'm excited for this match because i really really like baron corbin baron corbin he's won me over because he did i did not like baron corbin for a long time then he had that really good chairs match and then from there he's actually been doing pretty good he's actually been winning me over i, I i'm digging him this is the most I've been interested in a Dean Ambrose feud in a in quite a while. Yeah, IC title is a good place for Dean. I like it. I think he's a good uh, IC champ. Uh, U.S. the best storyline. Yeah, 
should be for the Universal, but it's not. And Jericho, I, I'm Jericho I'm, Owens. I'm okay with it because the story here is still just so good. It is so good, it should be the number one story. I'm number one invested in it as the number one story, so I, that's all I need, so yeah, I'm every, ready. Yeah, everyone is, except for the guys booking the show. That's such a negative way of looking at it, Jessel. Just be hyped. I am hyped, because I think it's going to be good. The problem is, it could be better. And I it wasted potential. Like, yeah, but everything could be better. That's, that's not true. If you sit there and think about it enough, you can convince yourself that it's true. Trust me. I'm doing it right now. Regardless of all that, <laughs> I think this match is going to be great. It's the two best workers on Raw having the best storyline on Raw. It'll be great. No, I am incredibly excited. Match of, match of the night. Uh, Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, Unless the Cruiserweights take it. I could see if this match is put later on the card and then some other matches take up a lot of time that they be like, oh, you guys get less time now. And that would upset me. So I'm hoping this match gets as much time as it deserves. I can't but, imagine they'd take the time from this. They'd have to take the time from, from, uh, oh, geez. What would they take the time from? The tag <laughs> match? John I mean, Cena, they're not. Cena if, Miz. If there's still a Triple H match, they're not going to take time from that. No, he's got that, he's got that click mentality where his time is worth more than everybody else's. I brought up the Cruiserweights. Uh, what do you think now that Austin Aries won the Fatal 5-Way Elimination match? I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm glad they're doing a one-on-one instead of a multi-man jumbly fest. When originally announced, uh, they just said Fatal 5-Way, and I thought it was going to be Neville comes in and ruins that match to set up a six-man ladder match. But with the making elimination, it was like, oh, okay, yeah, this is this is Austin's time. A double. A double. A double. I think he's. I think he is improving. Because to be honest, I don't quite care for him in the ring. No, I I am with you there. I he's I definitely a hard time being a babyface. I definitely like him more than I did in when I watched him. I watched him a little bit in TNA. I watched him like right towards his end, his end run in TNA. Uh, I I'm getting around to liking him. I don't like him nearly as much as I like Neville, but it should yeah. be a really good match. No, uh, ne- Neville. I'm a mark for Neville. I'm rarely a mark any longer. But I mark out for Neville. Yeah, you do. You got t- two shirts. I got both his shirts. Yeah, a hundred percent of his merchandise you have. Not a hundred percent. You can buy a you can buy a piece scraps of ring signed by Neville, and I don't I don't buy that nonsense. But I got I'll both his shirts. I'll buy it for you. <laughs> well, I, if you buy it for me, if I don't have to pay for it, I'll take it. But no, I'm I'm really excited for it. Neville works really well. Neville Jack Gallagher was without a doubt the best match at Fastlane. Yeah, I agree. I just watched Fastlane earlier today, so I'm rethinking everything. I mean, a part of me wants to pick the Goldberg match because Goldberg won the title, but a best match, obviously, wrestling wise, Neville uh, and Gallagher. Uh, <laughs> Goldberg. Uh, let, let's let's uh, let's talk women. Uh, Alexa versus all. Alexa uh, versus all. Uh, SmackDown women. Now, is this is this one fall to a finish or elimination, or they have not even said? They're, oh, no. They're refusing to say. That's right. They're, they're refusing to say the rules. That's so hard to invest into. Uh, yeah. If it's a gauntlet match or if it's uh, that clusterfuck, the 13 women match. Yeah, so I guess I don't have really any feelings on it because I don't know what they're doing. See, so the problem is I love... So many of the the roster. I love Alexa. I love Becky. I love Carmella. Yeah, you do. Carmella's do. great. They, they're all great. Uh, Mickey James has come back and she's doing great. the the Becky the uh, the the Becky Lynch Natalia match was actually pretty decent. the the Mickey James Alexa match, which for the record is what I thought was going to happen at Mania. I thought it was going to be one v one. One on one, yeah. Mickey versus Alexa. What did they? Well, last year was the only women's match the triple threat, or do they have another one? I don't remember. I thought they had like some weird six tag. I can't remember either. Raw women: Charlotte v Sasha v Bailey. V Hold on. if they add Nia. V if they add Dana. V if they add Emma. <laughs> v if uh, Paige comes back for no reason. Oh, well, I'm gonna keep it with what we know as as a triple threat. Yeah, just yeah. being the three. 
Uh, which, okay, real quick. Um, last year, WrestleMania had a 10 Diva tag team match with Team Total Divas, which was Brie, Paige, N- Natty, Alicia, and Eva versus Team Bad, which was Lana, Naomi, Tamina, Emma, and Summer Rae. So there you go. That was that was last year's. And that was an 11 minute match. That's a long match. Wow, I don't remember. I don't remember that match. Jeez. It was it was longer than the uh Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal last year. Of course it was. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, uh, I, I I'll say this. I really I've been wanting Dana to turn face, Dana Brooke to turn face for uh-huh. so long. So I want her in this match so bad. Yeah, I don't I'd be surprised if that happened this I mean, quickly. I'm, it's not going to happen, but I want it. I am very happy that she turned face. You know I'm right there with you on that one. I would mm-hmm. expect uh, her and Nia Jax maybe on the pre-show, which is totally respectable, by the way, being on the pre-show. Yeah, absolutely. I said that earlier. No, no, I agree. Uh, but <laughs> the triple threat, um, I the Sasha heel stuff makes it kind of interesting. I'm getting kind of tired of the – Charlotte versus Sasha matches, so I hope it's not a lot of that. Well, speaking of the thing I'm tired of, I'm tired of Bailey. The Bailey experiment <laughs> has failed. I, w- I wouldn't say that yet. Give it more, a little bit more time before you can say that. Give it a little bit more time for crowds to not react to Bailey at all. I would take the title off of her. I would say her as a her as a champion is not working because with a character like that, you shouldn't have her as a champion. Her to screw up a tree of woe and an elbow drop. Didn't she win, or I guess not win, but didn't she get voted match of the year last year? Bailey? Wasn't it some two, wasn't it an Iron Woman's match? I don't know. Regardless, I am not a fan of Bailey. I hate her gimmick. I hate her in the ring. And I'm ready for her to go away, come back, changed, turn into Bailey King. She's king of the women's division. <laughs> <laughs> Just turn her heel. Big boy belts. Orton Wyatt, Wyatt taking an ash bath. That was a little weird. Yeah, uh, on uh, on SmackDown uh, yesterday or uh, Tuesday, he Bray Wyatt went to the burning building of Randy Orton's felonies and then bathed himself in the charcoal ashes of his demon goddess sister that has given him now all the power to unleash himself. Just nonsense, utter nonsense. All right, right quick throwback because I did my research. I know everybody cares. In 2015, Sasha Banks versus Bayley at TakeOver Brooklyn was tied with the match of the year with the uh, Lesnar-Cena-Rollins match at Royal Rumble. So it wasn't last year. It was the year before, which makes more sense since uh, Sasha was in the main roster last year. But there you go. There you go. I like the fact that they actually gave Bray an up. They actually made him... Gave him something to make him look like, you know, just something positive, something to seem like he has an edge it's, in the feud. It's just some anime bullshit. Oh my like, gosh. He, oh, I'm now I'm more powerful. I absorbed the ener- energies of dead sister Abigail. And, I, you know, he's a creepy dude and he's been talking about, you know, I like that kind of stuff. That That doesn't bother me at all. I like it. I like it when it's done well, but it's certainly definitely not done well. Well, we disagree on that. You think you you think that this is being done well. You think Randy Orton Bray Wyatt that this feud as presented currently is being done well. I thought last night's thing was interesting and it was good for the feud. That none of that is the answer to the question. Okay, no, overall it's not a good feud, but that's, There you go. That's what I'm <laughs> saying. But that doesn't discount the other part of what I'm saying and that's the other thing that you're saying. That doesn't discount the fact that I liked what happened last night. No, I'm not. It's perfectly fine to like whatever you want to like. I'm just saying that this is not good. This could be good, and it's just silly nonsense. And this is... I liked him stealing The Undertaker's magic. Like, don't get me wrong. I like Bray Wyatt having mystical crazy powers. But... After his emotional breakdown, a moment where I, as a fan, watched him and said, Wow, I can really relate to this guy. I really want to see him whoop Randy Orton's ass for doing that. Then we get this charcoal nonsense where he puts himself in blackface and... Uh, <laughs> puts himself like in this, blackface. Like, this is... This is not... <laughs> uh, 
it, it's like they did a thing that was a terrible decision, and that was have Randy Orton murder a cameraman, commit arson, and turn on him in the most ridiculous ways possible. And then they said to themselves, man, that Bray Wyatt, he sure did act really sympathetically. How can we make this worse? I know. Let's have him do a filmed vignette, put him in blackface, <laughs> and level up like Goku going Super Saiyan nonsense. Doesn't bother me in the slightest. <laughs> uh, last match is Brock Lesnar versus Goldberg for the for the title for the Universal. What's your hype levels? My hype levels are low because. There's always that one match going into Mania where everybody expects and everybody is saying who the winner's going to be. So if I can convince myself that all the things I'm reading about the Lesnar's just going to win and Goldberg's going to leave aren't true, then my hype level will go up. But right, my, right now, I'm low. Yeah, uh, me too. This is this is a case of them putting the title on a feud that didn't need it. Because honestly, Brock, Brock Goldberg 3... I'm fine with Brock Goldberg 3. I get it. But having the title in this feud actively makes it worse to me. When it was just Lesnar-Goldberg, just for one-upmanship, just for who is the best. Like, I'm into that. I get it. Lesnar has something to prove. Goldberg is the guy who Lesnar can't beat. It's an obstacle. But as soon as you put the title in that story, it dilutes the focus. It makes the story not as good. Yeah, I agree 100% with that. Yeah. I don't want to see either guy with the ti- with that title after WrestleMania. I don't think anyone that's not a full-time worker should have a title. Now, I-, I will say this. Well, I agree with that, absolutely. Part-timers should be spectacle, and that's the end of it. But if Goldberg retains, that would be hype. Oh, yeah, I'll blow my load to the moon. Like, I would... I would... <laughs> We talk about trying not to curse, and then you just you just go there, huh? I mean, none of those are curse words. But Whoa, really. you you said poopy. <laughs> I said fuck earlier. Well, um, I don't remember that. <laughs> I remember poopy. I don't remember fuck. But if Goldberg retains, that's exciting because Goldberg has to fight somebody else. And it means that Goldberg has to lose. And that's the only really interesting thing about it. But it is interesting. And the thought of Lesnar taking the title on another long run where he shows up just every now and then. That's what Jim Ross wants. You hear uh, what, what yeah, I, I read JR it. said? He wants Lesnar to hold the title for a year. I read it last night, and I – oh, God. It makes me so mad to think about <laughs> it. I hate it. And if Goldberg loses, it's what's going to – I mean uh, – well, we'll talk about it next week when we when we book a whole year. That's right. But regardless, both of us are not too high. Uh, honestly. Overall, this SmackDown, this SmackDown, this WrestleMania, I I I really don't know. I am. I feel like they put they had all the pieces to make a great one, and then they shuffled them wrong. You know, they put the pieces together weird. I I will say I'll I'll agree with that. That on paper, a lot of the matches. Did we talk about Roman and Undertaker? Oh, I guess not. I guess I skipped that. <laughs> well, there you go. Roman Reigns versus The Undertaker. Okay, well, we don't have to talk about it. <laughs> what? No, let's talk about it. Let's talk about this, this, the big dog, the big dog versus the dead man. Uh, um, it's slightly, I'm a, I'm a Roman Reigns fan. I know, Jessel's, I we know you're not a Roman Reigns fan. Hey, I gave him the biggest of chances in oh, Fastlane. God. No, I really did. I was so <laughs> invested in him as a babyface at Fastlane because the Bra- him versus Braun Strowman when the, their contract signing was so good. Roman Reigns comes out and he's wearing his uh, his his uh, sneakers. It's like, oh, those look really cool. I want those shoes. I'm rooting for you, Roman. Those are good have shoes. The most paint by numbers, garbage, boring WWE style match. It was bad. I agree. So many people love it too. I don't under I don't understand. I don't understand why so many people are like, "That's a match we've seen eight billion times." Sure, love it. I don't I don't get it. It felt like a early WWE champion John Cena match. Oh yeah, or, like. or Orton or or Orton match. Yeah, yeah it, absolutely. It was not good. But I gave him every. I I really really did. I really did go into that match cheering for Roman, and he can't. Do it for me. He'll get there for you. 
Trust me. It really sucks, because I really, really liked him back originally when he was learning, when he was in FCW as Lee Aki. I loved Lee Aki. I loved him as, as, as I am a Samoan babyface. Smile. I thought he, I thought he was Smile. learning and having great matches. I thought he was having a good time. The Shield was entertaining, and him as the, as the, the quiet, powerful one worked. But him by himself, where he stole the Shield music, he, he's the only one that got to keep the Shield's music. Everyone else... Everyone else had to get their own new music, but he got to keep the shield music. He also got to keep wearing the the non-protective protective gear. The music fits him better because the music has got that slow prodding, burn it, burn it. And that's his whole thing is he just walks in and burn it. And the music fits his movements. It doesn't really fit the other two guys. It shouldn't fit any of them. You don't uh, Triple H doesn't go wandering around still to the DX music. No, but back in the, the the thing is broken up. Give him his own theme. That's his theme. That way, it doesn't dilute it for when we have a Shield reunion. Oh, when God, we hear I, that not music a again, Shield reunion. That's gonna happen. Oh, I hope not. They they think the Shield's one of the greatest factions of all time. That's gonna happen. I know there's that DVD that is the best or the greatest factions of all time, but I never watched it. So I hope they're not ranked high on there. Uh, I don't know. I, we could look it up. I don't remember. I will say this about this year's WrestleMania. The matches are not, they don't strike me as a must-see, but this is one of the WrestleManias where I feel like most of the matches, taking not taking Lesnar Goldberg to account, I am not sure who, like I'm still uh, not sure who I think is going to win. And that that is an accomplishment in itself. That I'm, I'm, going, I'm going through the list now, and I, I, I really do only think there's... Other than Lesnar Goldberg, I think there's only one lock, one guarantee. Who do you think that is? Or you don't want to say? Well, I'll, I'll tell you. I think it's the U.S. title. I think Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho loses at WrestleMania. That's what he does. Uh, see, I don't agree. I think the opposite on that one. So interesting. But I don't know. I, I, I'd be fine with either winning. Just uh, that one feels like a lock to me. I would say, as far as lock goes, because I don't, I don't think the Owens one, I would... If they go with the Rollins and Triple H, I would think that Seth Rollins is a lock. I see. I could see Triple H winning. Triple and that's H- what's cool about this year's WrestleMania is that the matches got that going for I, them. I, I do. I do agree with that. This WrestleMania, more than a lot of them, doesn't feel like a season finale. Yeah, that's because a lot of WrestleManias feel like a season finale. This one actually feels like feels like the beginning of a bunch of stories instead of the end of a bunch of them, which I do like. I, I do think that's good. Uh, it makes doing the, the Booker T Fantasy Invitational really fun. Where do really, you go really, from here? Really yeah. challenging, my friends. Very challenging. It is challenging, but it's it's. Uh, I really enjoyed it. It took, me, it took me six hours, I think, of just sitting here staring at the screen walking through title by title, uh, Michael and I talking about his, his the way he did it, I, I could never do it the way he does it, but he went pay-per-view by pay-per-view. Oh, gosh. Yeah, I had I had to follow the titles. I had to take a title all the way to WrestleMania, then go back and take a title all the way to WrestleMania. Yeah. That's the same way I'm doing it, so not surprising that you and I are doing it the same way. Yep. Uh, what do you think, Michael? Darn me, Argyles! Nice. Michael, you monster. <laughs> uh, uh, with that topic taken care of, uh, it's time for uh, topic two. Two. That's mine, right? Yeah, boy. All right. After we just talked about the WrestleMania card, so it's fresh on everybody's mind. My question is: uh, Imagine that all the storylines have gone as they have so far, but next week on WWE programming, you have to take a WrestleMania match, cancel it, and rebook those wrestlers for WrestleMania. So you can pick any match you want, and you don't have to put them. If you just want to take them and throw them, (laughs) you know, just get rid of them all together. You can just throw them away? Think think from a business sense. You know, you don't want to be stupid. I would have just thrown them away. All right. Uh, Do you want me to go first or do you want to go first? Oh, you can go first. All right. Uh, I'm going to take and dissolve Roman Reigns versus The Undertaker. Okay, so how how does that happen? That match doesn't need to happen at all. And the outcome of that match, no matter what happens, isn't particularly interesting. Undertaker wins strong. Eh. Undertaker wins weak. Eh. Roman Reigns wins strong. Eh. 
the streak's already over. Who cares? Roman Reigns wins by cheating. He still probably won't turn heel, so eh. He's already going to get booed, so even if he does turn heel, we're already booing him, so you don't get that Austin at the end of uh, uh, WrestleMania, what, 99? 2001. Where he, where he turns heel. 2001, where he turns heel. Like, you don't get that moment. Everyone already booing him. It's just, Roman Reigns Undertaker is pointless. So what I'd do is take that match apart. So Roman, upset, puts himself in the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. That immediately makes that match have so much more credence. It has so much more importance. You actually have a main eventer in there and the guy who he's been feuding with trying to tear each other apart. It makes winning that match matter, which I think just makes that match better. It's a good place for Roman. It lets you finish Roman Braun. Just clean that up. One way or the other, Braun tosses Roman or Roman tosses him. Whatever. I think that just makes it better. Okay. And then Undertaker. You just throw him out of there. No, I'd add him to Goldberg Lesnar. Make it a triple threat. Oh, man, that'd be that'd be weird. Well, if watching the Royal Rumble again, that's what they were leading up to. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. It, 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 for, first off, it means the match won't be short because you have two workers in there with Goldberg. It increases the work rate. Uh, it is Goldberg much, is a worker, Jessel. It, it's much more interesting because it's greatest streak of all time versus the second greatest streak of all time in a match we've never seen versus the ender of one of the streaks and a guy trying to ruin another one. Like, it's just really, really interesting. The title doesn't matter in Goldberg Lesnar 3, but the title super duper matters in Undertaker Goldberg Lesnar. That's interesting. So that's where I'd put him. That's what I'd do. I think that's a way more interesting matchup. It's a triple threat, and triple threat for main events are... uh, Sometimes they're great, sometimes they're kind of a waste. But I think that this one... Just put all the part-timers in the same match? (laughs) That's really interesting! I I really like all all of the idea, except for the fact that a part-timer still gets the belt. But... Besides that, I really, it's actually I really like, I really like it. Well, thank you. I didn't think you would, because I know what you, I know what you took apart. I mean, I like, I mean, I like Roman Reigns, and it still gives Roman Reigns a big match. Still gives Roman Reigns a big. Uh, yeah, yeah. As much as I don't like Roman, I'm not an idiot. I know that they're going to push him to the moon anyway. So let's use them pushing him to the moon to make something else matter. And if Goldberg beat Undertaker at WrestleMania, oh my god! Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, like, like, imagine it goes, it goes, Tombstone, Tombstone to Brock Lesnar, reverse it, Tombstone to Undertaker, spear Brock Lesnar, Goldberg goes to pin, super push out, like that moment right there, where where, where Goldberg tries to pin Undertaker and he kicks out at one, just does the stupid laugh in his face. That'd be amazing. That'd be so good. That would be cool. Uh, I will give you that. That would be cool. That would be cooler than seeing Goldberg versus Lesnar again. So so what is what is yours? All right. I'm going to get rid of uh, AJ Styles and Shane McMahon. Shock of all shocks. <laughs> In a perfect world, I would go with uh, – if I could believe that WWE – that Daniel Bryan could actually wrestle and WWE is just being a dick – I would go with the fact that AJ or that Shane McMahon got hurt too bad from AJ's attack, and Daniel Bryan gets asked to take his place, and then you get Daniel Bryan versus AJ Styles. But uh, if that's not fair because of you know we're we're he did officially retire, I guess. Uh, then I would go with um, Shane McMahon actually approaching Dolph Ziggler, who's been going through and picking off are the new guys who's been coming to WWE and trying to take over the spotlight. And AJ Styles is a new guy in the WWE. And Shane goes to Dolph Ziggler and tries to, you know, talk him into saying, you know, I know you're 
going after these guys. I really need your help. I know you can accomplish this. I know you can help me out. And Ziggler's kind of not really willing to do it. But Shane promises him an opportunity if he can help him out. And so you, you get two kind of heels that people don't really like che- cheering ag- or booing against going up against each other, which I know you don't usually get at WrestleMania is two bad guys against each other. But the match is just a match I really, 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 really want to see. So I'm just going to be... Has that match not happened yet? In WWE? No, never. So unless it's happened somewhere weird that I've never seen before. For some reason, I thought that Dolph AJ had already happened. Oh, right, right after the draft, but I guess not. Yeah, if it has, I've missed it. Yeah, I get no. I I I I bet you're right. I just for whatever reason, I'd already assumed that match had happened. Well, because they were both good guys right after the draft, so I I do not remember it. Either way, then too at WrestleMania, Dolph teetering on if he's gonna go back over to the light side or the dark side would be interesting. Their match would be fantastic, way better than shitty old Shane O'Mac. But I would it perfect perfect world is Daniel Bryan versus AJ Styles. But after that, I would do Dolph Ziggler and AJ Styles. No, I get that. I get that totally. I actually thought you were gonna say. Uh, I thought you were gonna say AJ Finn Balor. Nah. Because Finn is nowhere to be seen. Yeah, I know Finn's sitting around he's ready. Back. He what they he did a house show last week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. I, I actually I actually considered uh, Finn Undertaker. Yeah, I thought about Finn when I was thinking about this, but I would rather see I personally would rather see Ziggler and AJ Styles at WrestleMania. That'd be interesting, to say the least. I I I, won, I wonder how they would work together, because Ziggler can almost have a great match with anyone, but there are a few people that he just doesn't work well with, and I find that he tends to be the same kind of uh, guy as Jericho. That you can almost have a match with everybody and be great, but sometimes you just don't click. And I didn't think Jericho and Styles clicked. So for whatever reason, I didn't think Ziggler and Styles would click either. No, Jericho, Jericho and Styles didn't really work. That was last year's Mania. But I think I think Ziggler is so starved for being at the top right now, and he deserves it. I think I think he'd make it work. I got you. Well, I, I can't blame you. That makes sense to me. At this point, Michael would answer. Uh, Michael, do you have... Uh, do you have one? Toss me, Tom's my goodness. Yeah, all right. No, that's not going to happen. But thanks, Michael. Uh, <laughs> Michael, that's the worst idea of them all. <laughs> um, uh, and with that, uh, we we come to the close of our episode zero for Broken Table Commentary. Uh, uh, I want to thank everybody for listening in. Next week, we will go over the Booker T Fantasy Invitational. You'll hear an entire. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm boring you. No, that was me being nervous. Oh, I thought that was you yawning in my face. No, I was going, Ew, I'm nervous about my Booker T Invitational. <laughs> Remember to check us out on uh, our website, brokentablecommentary.com. You can find us on SoundCloud, YouTube, and Facebook. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And do not forget that you can email us your entries, and we'll get them up on the website. Brokentablecommentary at gmail.com. Bye, best friends. Bye, pals.